Hi, this is Ali from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today's record is the Six Man Dara Man, Man from the Future from 1976. So let's get started. A crisp autumn morning at Langley Air Force Base, where there seems to be no sign of life except for a black limousine speeding over the deserted runways. And in the back seat sits a grim General Hickman, the commanding officer of Langley. And next to him, none other than Oscar Goldman. Is the evacuation complete, General? Complete, Goldman. All my men are off the base, but I don't like it. Still, you were right. No sense risking their lives against something we don't know how to fight. Mobile home. I'll take it. Goldman here. Well, keep searching the base until you locate him. Austin hasn't checked out, so I know he's on the ground somewhere. We need him desperately. Where's the super tank now, General? Still advancing from the south gate and demolished. From minefields or heavy artillery could be the most dented. Who could have an enemy tank, for God's sake, could actually be smuggled over to invade the U.S. Air Force base? It's already happened, General, and it isn't difficult to figure out what its target is. Yes, our new rocket sled installation. If it's destroyed, a research in iron propulsion will be set back for months, maybe even years. Giving our adversary across the sea the jump they'll need to finish their system first. And I'm afraid they'll succeed if we can't find Steve Austin in time. But at that very moment, elsewhere on the base. A shimmering shape suddenly appears out of thin air. A shape that takes on human form. Finally crystallizing into focus, revealing itself to be none other than Steve Austin. But even though he indeed looks like Steve Austin, the thoughts coming from within are someone else's. So this is 1976. It appears my teleportational coordinates were accurate. I recognize the landmarks of Langley Airfield from all the visual research tapes I've studied. It's just as archaic as I imagined. Steve, there you are. We've been looking all over the base for you. That man is Oscar Goldman. My studies indicated he was Steve Austin's friend and superior. Therefore, for appearances, I must do as he says. Don't just stand there. Get in. We don't have a second to lose. As the limousine quickly accelerates across the evacuated base, Oscar Goldman outlines the crisis at hand. And so our rocket sled has to be protected at all costs. All costs. You understand? And there's the super tank, gentlemen, coming up on us at 3 o'clock. Look at that thing. A soldier's nightmare. You think you can handle it, Steve? Child's play. Nothing more than a crude vehicular unit equipped with elementary explosive armaments. Steve? Can you handle it? Uh, no problem that I can surmise, Oscar. Shall I intercept the enemy now? I wish you would, son. That tank is on the direct field line with the rocket sled installation. Go to it, pal. Look, that blasted tank is turning to aim its turret gun directly at Austin. He doesn't have a prayer now. Prayer has nothing to do with bionics, General. But even as the huge barrel fires a massive explosive charge at his human adversary... Look, he's jumping straight up 30 feet into the air, letting the blast pass under him. That's only for starters, General. Keep watching. Without warning, the super tank pivots and halts, while its momentum hurls its unwanted passenger to the ground. He's down! Steve! Mercilessly, the enemy turns and accelerates forward toward the sprawled fallen figure. Oh, my God, he's trying to run off the down. But before the tank can do just that, its potential victim suddenly springs to life and dashes around to the side of the killing machine, slamming his body up against it like a human battery. Pushing until... man thinks on his feet, Goldman. A tank pushed over on its side is as helpless as a bug on its back. Then I trust you'll never have any more doubts about the six million we spent on Colonel Austin, will you, General? You've got my word on that, Goldman. I never saw anything like him in action. But as the limousine pulls up to the helpless tank, and Oscar and the General step up. That's odd. Where the blazes did Austin go? I want to congratulate him. Must be around somewhere. Maybe he's phoning for reinforcements. Then I'll take a look for him in that bunker. But no sooner has the General left the scene when... Oscar... What's all the commotion? There you are. What's the big idea sneaking up behind me? What are you talking about? And where did that mean-looking tank come from? Hey, pal, this is no time for a sense of humor. Do I look like I'm joking? Now, when do you start telling me what's going on? Good God, you, you really don't know, do you? You mean you didn't overturn that tank? No way. 
For the past hour, I've been conducting inspections in the underground bunkers. I only came up a few minutes ago to find the base deserted. What I want to know is, what did I miss? You missed seeing yourself in action, pal. There was another Steve Austin here, and he performed bionically just as well as you. And more than likely, he's still at large somewhere on this base. It is several hours later that we rejoin the elusive Steve II, concealing himself on the confines of a narrow alley between two concrete bunkers as his identical counterpart passes by. The real Steve Austin has been methodically searching the base for hours now in an attempt to find me. And with his bionic eyesight, no doubt he eventually will. So it is better that I find him. Suddenly, Steve, too, dashes out from between the bunkers, only to come face to face with his own image. Steve Austin, allow me to introduce myself. Good grief. Oscar was right. You really are my double. In appearance, yes. But I assure you, I am not bionic. But the way you handle that tank. I merely simulated your bionic feats with the use of a portable bio power pack I'm wearing under my clothes. It boosts my own strength and other physical capabilities to a level equal to yours. But such device would be far beyond any technology on Earth. Beyond the Earth 1976, but not where I come from. The Earth of 2976. You see, I have journeyed to your time era from the far future. We have to go somewhere and talk. But if anyone sees two Steve Austins together... I have an idea. Why don't we use our respective abilities to run around the perimeter of the base so fast that we'll only be blurs to any onlookers who see us? Good thinking, uh, Steve. Almost in perfect unison, identical pairs of legs start pumping up and down like pistons as the two identical astronauts begin their bionic run. I can't believe you are really a double of me. And your name's really Steve Austin. The odds of probability, Austin. Down through the countless generations that followed you, it was inevitable that someone would eventually have your name and features. It's just simple mathematics. Simple to you, maybe, but now that you're here, what do you want? A very simple favor. I merely want to do a job for you, Colonel Austin. According to our historical records, you are destined to pilot your government's experimental rocket sled tomorrow. Am I correct? So far. Keep talking. In my era, mankind is dedicated to helping one another. To help another is the only justification for our existence. Selfishness has not existed for centuries. That's good to know. When a person in my era locates his ancestral double in time, it is his duty to travel back in time and help his double through a key event in his life. The event I've chosen to assist you in is your historic rocket sled ride. And if you don't get to fulfill this mission, then I must return to my own era in shame branded forever as a disgrace and a failure. And as their blurred bionic run comes to an end in front of a large hangar at the far end of the base... I'm not due to pilot the sled until 1,800 hours tomorrow. In the meantime, you can spend the night in this empty hangar. Does this mean you'll let me perform my mission and fulfill my destiny? Seems to be both of our destinies, doesn't it? I'll think it over tonight. I'll let you know my decision in the morning. I cannot ask you to be any fairer than that. I'll see you in the morning, then. But as the real Steve Austin leaves, he would be shocked by the grim thoughts running through his double's mind. I can only tell Steve Austin part of the truth. History decrees he will ride that sled tomorrow, but it also decrees he will perish when the sled malfunctions and explodes in use. I could not tell him that it is my duty to take his seat on that sled and die in his place. From what I've studied of my ancestral double's courageous feats, he would try and stop me from boarding the sled. And this I cannot allow. The rule of history must not be changed. The next morning, after a night of heavy deliberation, Steve Austin once again arrives at the hangar and enters. Steve, too? It's me, Austin. I've made up my mind about... With no warning at all, Steve Austin is sent reeling backward by a pair of super strong feet that ran into his back like jet-powered pile drivers. I am sorry, Steve Austin, but regardless of what your decision was, Steve Austin, who is riding that sled. I say we should talk it over first. Maybe... Again, a man from the future attacks, this time swiping Steve with a clamped double fist that sends him hurtling through a wall. There must be no doubt. I am riding the sled. It is my destiny. The man from the future charges a third time, but he is totally unprepared for the bionic fist that unexpectedly lashes out into his oncoming bulk. Seizing the advantage, Steve Austin lunges forward to grapple his counterpart from the future until they've latched onto each other in a vicious struggle. So fast moving and frantic, it is impossible to tell which Steve Austin is which. Until only one Steve Austin remains standing. But which one? It is nearly an hour later as the final countdown reaches.
reaches its last stage. And Oscar Goldman, General Hickman, and others watch the revving rocket sled from the mission control bunker. Let's hope the iron engine is functioning correctly this time. With Steve Austin at the controls, I can assure you the engine is in expert hands. After what I saw Austin do yesterday, I can't argue with that. Could I have that mic, Corporal? Thank you. Steve, I know you're not relayed to answer, but good luck. We'll see you at the end of the run. Outside. They want some sort of official statement on Colonel Austin's death. <coughs> Get rid of them, Corporal. Tell them I'm not ready to make a statement yet. Tell them anything. But the next moment, a shimmering shape appears in Oscar Goldman's office. A shape that takes human form to become Steve Austin. Steve, is it really you? It's me, Oscar. Not my double from the future. I'm back. But I don't understand, pal. B back from where? We thought your body was vaporized by intense heat at the crash. It, it was you in the sled, wasn't it? It was me, although I had the fight of my life keeping my double from taking my place. But how did you survive? Simple. At the last split second before the crash, I faded away because I was teleported to the future by my double superiors. You wound up in 2976? But where was the other Steve? Back in the hangar where I left him solidly unconscious. That's what surprised my rescuers in the future. They thought they were bringing back their own Steve Austin. It turned out he made a mistake. In researching my life, he read the mistaken reports of my death that the reporters filed today, not realizing history actually decreed that I would survive. But I imagine they're telling him all that now, because he was transported back to his own era the same time they returned me to 1976. Phew. It'll take me a while to sort all that out, but... The important thing is you're back, safe and sound. That's right, Oscar. Now all you've got to do is dream up a story for the reporters explaining how I miraculously survived that crash. Wait, where are you going? You, you've got to help. Not me, Oscar. After all my time traveling, I need a long nap. See you later. Now. So that was the Six Man Dower Man. The Man from the Future from 1976. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.